Feel the heart. Experience the soul. Community Pulse. It is 12 minutes past 9 o'clock. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And a very warm welcome. Um, this cold this morning, a very, very cool um, morning, alhamdulillah. No rain, however. Um, and we do indeed uh, need that rain. Nonetheless, today marks, of course, the 23rd of November 27, 2017. It also corresponds with the 4th of Rabi'ul Awal, 1438. Another month of Rabi'ul Awal also marks the uh, birth of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And indeed, may we we, uh, through our programs, also remind you, you to follow in the footsteps of our beloved Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, inshallah. My name is Zainab Bin, and I will be with you until about 12 this afternoon. In between, Mishka Muhammad will keep you company. That's between 10 and 11. But for this edition of Community Pulse, you can stay tuned and join us for the first hour. I have in studio with me Dr. Faiz Kirsten, and we continue talking about autoimmune diseases, inshallah. And uh, you can find out more about this and any questions pertaining to this. You can participate 0786 10 11 12 or 0216991786. And then the second hour, that's uh, Mishka Muhammad with you and job offers also um, bringing you the latest from the South African National Zakar Fund. And that is in the weekly update with Sanziv at about a quarter past 10 this morning. And then don't forget, she also reminds you of what's happening in and around your community with some community notices. But do give us a call and send those special messages, inshallah. That's 10 to 11. And also your latest job offers just before 11 o'clock. And it's Thursday, so it's Pillar Thursday on um, uh, after 11, inshallah, this morning. And then uh, that follows by the uh, lovely Dr. Mehtab Omar, who will be joining me. And she continues talking about the physical, um, the importance of physical therapy um, and also we spoke about the age last week and also um, uh, physical therapy when it comes to or rather exercise in um, w- with people who are pregnant and so inshallah we continue with that this morning all that and more you're on radio 786 and 100.4 fm also 1584 medium wave in pretoria Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Faiz. How are you? Uh, the last time I saw you was at the gala dinner. I Walaikum hope that you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Walaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Zainab, yes, yes, we saw you there and you look very lovely, I must say. <laughs> <laughs> very nice gala dinner, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. Yes, yes. Now, Dr. Faiz, our last conversation, we sort of touched on some of the um, some of autoimmune diseases. But I also understand that um, it's been increasing in some of the developing countries and not many of us are aware of this. Tell us a bit more. Yes, autoimmune diseases is sort of underrated, I would mm. say. Actually, in developed countries, the rate is, the incidence is, is growing rapidly. Mm. Um, in fact, now hundreds of millions of people are affected. In the, in the United States, about 80 million people, and around the world, obviously, hundreds mm. of millions. It's actually um, a huge problem in terms of chronic disease and the growth in numbers of chronic diseases or the, uh, the incidence of chronic disease. So autoimmune disease is something that all, everybody has to take seriously and we should do everything we can to prevent it. Because once you have it, it's uh, not difficult to reverse, but it can reach an irreversible stage. Then it's obviously impossible to reverse. Mm. But so the whole idea should be then to prevent it. And how do you prevent it? You first start by understanding what it's all about. So what is autoimmune disease? I mean, mm. it's like... Um, Say you've hired a uh, security company to protect you and your community, for example, and they do a good job. For years, the security company has been doing a good job. And then one day, they just start turning on the community and start firing on the community. <laughs> they start shooting at the community that they're supposed to be protecting. That's what autoimmune disease is, where your immune system starts attacking the body's own tissues. Mm. Why would the immune system become rogue? You know, why would your own immune system, which is designed to protect you, go nuts and crazy and start attacking your own tissues? You know, something must have happened mm. to either the immune system for it to go crazy or something has happened to your tissues, your cells, for your immune system to see these cells as uh, or your tissues as a danger, as a threat to your own well-being. So it's a si- crazy situation. And this is actually what happens. is ma- Mainly what happens is your, your tissues actually change. Something makes your tissues look foreign to the immune system, but also something causes your immune system to 
to become dysfunctional and mm. out of balance and starts attacking your, your normal tissues. Mm. So what are, what are these things that makes this happen, you know? And the thing that, the common thing actually that does it is actually environmental toxins. Obviously stress does it, lifestyle, environment, diet, uh, psychological stress, these are the things, but the main one today are actually environmental toxins mm. that we're exposed to in our food, in the air that we breathe, in the water that we drink, in the stuff that we put on our skins. In fact, 100,000 different chemicals have been produced since the, since the early 1900s. 100,000, okay? And only a fraction of these have actually been tested for safety. Uh, in fact, according to the United States Environmental Protection Agency, about 2.5 billion pounds of toxic chemicals are actually uh, released yearly. I mean, that's a lot of chemicals in the, in the United States. Mm. Imagine around the world. And 6 billion pounds of mercury. So we're living in a toxic, what do you call it, soup, swamp. <laughs> I don't even know what to call it anymore. It's just crazy. We're living in a completely unnatural environment. And it's not surprising then, you know, that the immune system goes crazy. It's seeing, mm. our, seeing ourselves as foreign to, to, uh, to ourselves, actually. And then it's, it's doing these crazy things to us. So different parts of the body are uh, attacked. And so you get these different diseases. They, they're given them different names, okay? But labeling something doesn't really help it much, you know, in terms of medicine uh, or in terms of healing the patient. I mean, you can label lo- rheumatoid arthritis, systemic lupus erythematosus, uh, whatever disease you want to call it. I mean, these are, there's about 80, more, almost 100 different diseases known as autoimmune diseases. But giving it a label is not really helpful because mm. if I say you're depressed, what does that really mean? You know, I'm about to put you on an antidepressant. I mean, there's so many different causes for depression. Mm. It'll be more meaningful to say what's causing, you know, this autoimmune disease. What's co- they all have a common cause, basically. Mm. So mm. forget about the labels. You say you got rheumatoid arthritis. It doesn't mean anything. What's caused it? And so you've got to look at the root causes. We mentioned the toxins. What are these toxins actually doing? They're ultimately impacting on your gut health. Mm. And that's really where the autoimmune diseases start is in the gut. When your gut is unhealthy, mm. the lining of your gut becomes leaky. In other words, it comes it holes develop in the gut and causes toxins to leak into your bloodstream. And also the bacteria in your gut, which are vital for your health and well-being, not, not only generally, but also your mental health, those, that, those bacteria, you know, or that microbiome becomes dysbiotic. In other mm. words, you get an imbalance in the, micro, in the microbes, whether it's fungi, bacteria, or yeast. And then that basically then triggers this whole cascade of, of, of things that happen that cause you to develop an autoimmune disease. Yeah. It is Radio 786 100.4 FM, also 1584 medium wave in Pretoria. Now, Dr. Faiz Kirsten in studio with me, we're talking about autoimmune diseases. And as mentioned, doctors don't know what causes the immune system's misfire, yet some people are more likely to get an immu- autoimmune disease than others. According to statistics, women more than men, um, uh, they they sit with an autoimmune um, disease. And it normally happens during childbearing years, um, which is between 14 and 44. Some autoimmune diseases are, are more common in certain ethnic groups as well. For example, lupus affects more African-American and Hispanic people than Caucasian. Um, certain immune diseases like multiple sclerosis and lupus run in families as well, and I find that quite interesting. Um, but not every family member will necessarily have the same disease, but they inherit a susceptible susceptibility to an autoimmune condition. Um, as mentioned, uh, that there is there is um, talks that it is related to the environment, um, chemi- chemical warfare, basically. So um, there's also another another uh, uh, theory that a Western diet is another trigger. Yes, yes, diet is very important. Uh, there's a tiny genetic component to it. It's mainly life, uh, environment and diet. Mm. Those are the two major but factors. But eating high fat sugar. Uh, yes, bad fats and sugar uh-huh. will disrupt your microbiome. You know, in order to be healthy, you've got to have a healthy bacterial or microbiome population. You know, so these things produce neurotransmitters, these bacteria, which are chemicals that uh-huh. affect your, your, men- your mental status. You know, whether you feel anxious or depressed. Your psychology is affected by these uh, the chemicals that these bacteria produce. So your diet, if it's not optimal, if you're not feeding these bacteria the right food, it's called pre, uh, prebiotics, mm-hmm. then uh, 
they're going to get angry. They're going to get upset. Okay, <laughs> They're not going to mm. start producing your vitamins, your nutrients, the neurotransmitters that you need. But but also we, we, we spoke about inflammation, um, just be, um, briefly touched on it. And um, processed foods is linked to um, inflammation, isn't it? Without a doubt, yes, mm. yes, 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 absolutely. And, and this also might set of the immune system, isn't it? Without a doubt, yeah, mm. absolutely. Mm. It triggers the in inflammatory response. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now there's also another theory that's called the hygiene hypothesis. Hygiene hypothesis, tell um, me about that. Because of vaccines and antiseptics, um, children today are, aren't exposed to as many um, germs as they were in the past. Oh yeah, kids growing up on farms are much mm. healthier compared to kids mm. growing up in the city. Because in the farm, kids are exposed to... So so basically the lack of exposure could make the immune system almost um, prone to... Yeah, because you, when you're growing up on a farm or you're living in a natural environment, you're exposed to a lot of mm. germs and that's a challenge to your immune system and it becomes stronger. If you don't challenge yourself, you know, you stay weak. So if you go to the gym and you challenge your muscles, you know, you become strong. So your immune system needs a challenge and therefore vaccines will also suppress your immune system. Mm. They don't really challenge them. So it's not a good idea to vaccinate kids, quite honestly. Yeah. What are the, f- what are the, mo- the common autoimmune diseases? Rheumatoid arthritis, SLE, there's a whole range of them, you know. But f- as I said, labeling something is basically Western medicine. You know, we label everything. And then people identify with those labels. Oh, I have diabetes. I have cancer. I have hypertension. It's almost like you are hypertension or you are diabetes. <laughs> so we should get away from these labels. And what we should say, why are we getting sick? You know, what's the root cause of our problem so that we can avoid these causes or, or, or eliminate them ideally. But we can't eliminate the cause and avoid the cause. And then that will solve the problem. And that's solving the problem on the plane of causality. Humanity is stuck on the plane of effect. We're trying to solve problems, you know, after the horse has left the stable and the plane of Mm. effect. That's completely wrong. And we'll never solve the problems. And the reason why we won't solve the problem is because we don't want to solve them. Mm. People uh, who's responsible for helping us solve these problems don't want to solve them. So we, the people, have to take the bull by the horn, so to speak, and solve the problem. But we'll only solve it, as I said, at the level of the cause of the problem. And so forget the labels, mm. you know, let's let's look at the causes, yeah. And I know that Dr. Dr. Faiz will be helping us solve that problem. So You're so welcome. <laughs> Anytime. So tell us, so tell us, give us the remedy. What do we do? Join the institute. <laughs> 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 the remedy is to understand, you know, chronic disease, you know, understand the causes and it, it's not difficult, quite honestly. The the most important and I think the most difficult thing that people perceive to be difficult mm. is or they don't even know what the Ultimately, the cause of really everything is what you believe. It's your beliefs that are driving your behavior, okay? So ultimately, the cause is what's, what beliefs you hold, okay? So if you believe that there's nothing you can do about autoimmune diseases, then ultimately, there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. I think it was Henry Ford who said, you know, whether you believe you can or you believe you can't, you know, either way, you're right. Which <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> very, very, very wise words, actually, because he's completely right. Mm. So we got to find the cause. Uh, so how do we change our diet? A lot of people find it difficult to change their diet. You know, when you even start talking about food, some people even get angry. They actually really get angry with you. No, I'm not going to. Ch- I once told somebody, you know, you got to reprogram your taste buds. She said, no, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not going to reprogram my taste buds. Um, but we have to do these things, you mm-hmm. know, if you want to change. If you really respect ourselves and we really want true change we have to take the bull by the horns mm. yeah. often when I speak to doctors um, it's, it's always a sad reality that we are very often the cause of our own destruction when it comes to our health we are on a path of self-destruction mm. we've been programmed to self-destruct I think humanity has been programmed <laughs> to self-destruct and I see it happening all around me mm. all the time mm. people just self-destructing you know um, people are smoking themselves silly you know and they're dying of cancer of the lungs mm. and they know they're going to die of some smoking related condition. They're speeding up the process. But they're not going to stop, you know, and they believe there's nothing they can do. That again comes to the belief. Ah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to smoking, doctor. I can't do anything about it. You know, and I also feel good when I smoke. You got to change your thinking, you know. Uh, otherwise, you won't stop smoking and you will, you will have some kind of consequence, negative consequence of that. So we really have to look into ourselves. Like you say, we are the cause. We mm. really are. Mm. But the people want us to be sick and die prematurely and suffer first before we die 
they are actually helping the process with their technologies that they have mm. to control our minds. Mm. It's powerful stuff. I mean, if you understand what these people have, have uh, you know, at their disposal, you'll be shocked, actually. Yeah. Mm. The time, 28 minutes past 9 o'clock. This is Community Pulse on Radio 786 and 100.4 FM. If you have just joined us, you are listening to Dr. Faiz Kirsten, who's talking about autoimmune diseases. And really, uh, what are the, the most common autoimmune diseases? And one of it, the, in fact, the top one, is um, diabetes and I think every second person that I speak to is diabetic um, but but when you even look at the story it's all um, lifestyle related it's, it's how they live it's what they eat and so that being the the, the consequence of of the the, um, the action of course um, uh, all, all, all our actions has con- consequences as you mentioned so Similarly to how our beliefs drives our behavior, um, I think that definitely it starts up here. Yeah, it starts with the mind. It starts with how we think and how we view things. And so it's. So I think starting. I'm, so I'm not going to ask where to start. I'm going to say that it's clearly evident that we need to start with ourselves and really look at how we view things and our lifestyle. Without a doubt, you know that's why my focus of research over many years now has been on the mind and on the brain. You know, um, and I and I had to. I studied, I researched in depth, how do you reprogram the brain? How does the brain work, you know? And it's very possible to do these things because I've done it so I can speak from personal experience. But it, there's many studies that actually show, you know, that this is possible. Mm. Many, many, I mean, peer-reviewed, uh, authentic studies. So it all starts with us. And if we're not prepared to take that first step, you know, of a thousand miles, then you're never going to actually finish the journey uh, with mm. the, you know, but you're never going to go on the journey in the first place if you don't take that first step. So it all starts with the first step. Diabetes is very common, like you said. Type 1 diabetes is actually autoimmune disease. Mm. Type 2 is, is not really uh, more a lifestyle disease. But both are reversible, whether it's you know, type 1 or mm. type 2. And a lot of mm. people don't believe that type 1 is actually reversible. They think it's insulin dependent. You're going to be on insulin for the rest of your life. And that's the end of the story. But that's not true at all. You mm. can reverse both, actually. Mm. So... Uh, but it's, you must be committed to wanting to change. If you have an autoimmune disease and you believe that there's just nothing you can do about it, your doctor said, you know, you're going to be on these meds for the rest of your life. You have to be on immunosuppressants <laughs> because your immune system gone crazy. That's the wrong thing to do for the patient because these mm-hmm. immunosuppressants, you know, mm-hmm. when you suppress your immune system, you put yourself more at risk of, of other things. Cancer, for example, people with a strong immune system, a healthy immune system, don't get cancer because your immune system is fighting off these cancer cells that form every day in your body. Now you suppress it with immunosuppressants. <laughs> <laughs> now you can't fight off these cancer cells that are forming in your body, and the next thing you've got cancer, in addition to your immune di- autoimmune disease. You know, it's like a vicious mm. cycle, and you're on this road to complete you know, destruction. Mm. So, but the guys you know, want this to happen, they basically laugh all the way to the bank, because before you die, you're going to give them you know, quite a few hundred thousand rand. Yeah. 9.30 on Radio 786. You're live in E. Assalamu alaikum. Salam to you, Zainab, and salam to the doctor. Oh, I just want to salam. pose a question, you know. Lately, it come to a fore, you know, uh, many doctors tell you you must avoid eating the flesh of uh, meat, especially uh, beef and some kind of uh, meat. But to me, uh, as a Muslim, Allah told you, you don't uh, over eat you in certain uh, with, with fish. You must be moderate in everything. So my question is, is this true? Because as far as I can remember, many years people have been eating meat uh, and uh, they lived for many, many years. So is this true? Should we as human beings, why Allah has created this stuff, that the kitchen, the chicken uh, and, 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 and sheep and what else, to, to, for us to uh, consume, to eat, to, get, uh, to, to, to get, uh, feed us? So is this true? Should we avoid not eating this stuff? Shukran. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Yeah, shukran for that, brother. Very, very, very good question. You know, should we not eat meat? meat. <laughs> <laughs> when the Quran actually allows us to eat meat, that's a very good question. Something I thought about, you know, in depth. Um, we can eat meat, okay? Today, though, in today's world, I would advise not to. There's many doctors who say, no, you're talking nonsense. You know, people can't eat meat. I would say you can eat meat if the cow 
spent its life <laughs> in a pasture <laughs> eating grass okay and not being assaulted with antibiotics and hormones and all these poisons that they put into these animals before they mm. are slaughtered and then fed to people if your cow is organic okay and is slaughtered in the proper halal way where the cow wasn't tortured to death okay it it actually accepted its death willingly because it was slaughtered in a proper way okay then you are allowed to eat that but also in moderation don't eat too much meat because too much meat even if it's organic cross fed beef mm. or whatever else too much of anything too much it? of a good thing is bad also mm. okay so but a plant based diet largely is the one that's going to help you overcome and prevent chronic disease mm. really a plant based diet if you want to eat meat eat a little bit of organic meat you know not mm. much okay um i I try I stopped eating meat years ago. I mean red meat. I don't eat red meat. I don't eat cows and sheep, <laughs> okay. I tried to stop eating fish at one point. Um because I just stopped eating meat, so I said I'll try to stop eating fish and I tell you after 6 weeks I felt weird. Mm. I can't even describe it up to today how I felt. It was like the weirdest. Mm. I don't think that symptom is described in any <laughs> textbook. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure mm. that one out. And I obviously realized, thought maybe it's because I'm not eating fish. And so I started eating fish again and I com- felt completely normal. A few <laughs> years later I tried the same thing and I felt again the same mm. weird feeling. Mm. So it seems as if I must eat fish. So I do <laughs> so I do eat fish today. <laughs> but not much. I still eat fish, uh but uh, mostly plants. You are listening today to Radio 786 on 100.4 FM and our lines open in 0216991786 autoimmune diseases that is the topic with Dr. Faiz Kirsten. Hello and assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Dana and Doctor, well, I'd like to pose a question. I got an um, inactive thyroid, which is due to menopause, but I'm borderline. And the thing is, this, I constantly feel tired. And um, if Doctor can prescribe to me um, what I can eat, what's good for me, or I've been to doctors, they say there's absolutely nothing wrong with me. I've just got allergies. So I'd like doctor's opinion on this please. Sorry, did you say you have an inactive thyroid due to menopause? Well, I discovered it when I started menopause. So you were diagnosed with hypothyroidism, is that correct? Yeah, but I go for regular checkups and I seem to be just on borderline all the time. So your so thyroid hormone level was done but it's borderline low, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So but they haven't put you on thyroid replacement. I do. I'm 1.05 mm-hmm. aldosterone. Okay. Which I take on a daily basis. But I still feel tired. I don't know why. I'm I'm not aware of menopause causing hypothyroidism or borderline hypothyroidism. Quite oh, honestly, well, that time have they not investigated you for for a cause for your hypothyroidism? Oh, okay. Have they investigated? Have they tried to find what's causing it? Did they just say it's the menopause? Well, you know, I've been a heavy bleeder with uh, my menstruation, and I actually bled very badly that time. Okay. And I was hospitalized, and that's when they discovered it. Okay. Okay. Well, you need to be investigated. You need to find the root cause of your problem, your tiredness specifically. Mm-hmm. Could be related to the thyroid, but it doesn't sound like it. And you need full investigation, yeah, full assessment. Mm-hmm. Look, I've always suffered from low iron when I started menopause. Uh, my um, menstruation. Okay, but is it that still low or is it my problem? Okay, is okay. it still low though? Your iron. My thyroid. No, your iron level. My iron level. I don't know. They uh, look. I go for blood tests, and uh, they just keep on giving me the uh, thyroid tablets to continue. Okay. Shukran, shukran right. so much for um, your question. Ask one. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Okay. Uh yeah, no, that lady, uh thank you sister for that. She needs uh, in f- a full assessment actually, you know, mm-hmm. to find out what's what's causing her symptoms and her problems, yeah. Okay. Now we have also a a miss a question via um WhatsApp on 0786101112. In fact, one comment saying that assalamu alaikum Zainab, my daughter um, uh, passed away. Uh Shahida and she passed away uh, lupus rheumatoid uh, rheumatoid rheumatoid rheumat- arthritis something. So, and she was very young, and this is from Auntie Gigi. And then also, assalamualaikum to all, Dr. Dr. Kirsten. 
it's still in practice and okay contact details um, but you're going for a really necessary program a fun, a fun. now Dr. Faiz we will take a short break inshallah and then after the break we continue I do encourage you to uh, be part of the conversation on 021-699-1786 you may also send your questions or comments to 0786-10-11-12 do stay with Radio 786 on 100.4 FM 2210 on Radio 786 and also the program Community Pulse. I'm Zainab Bean in studio. Dr. Faiz Kirsten joins me and we're talking about autoimmune diseases. Our lines open in 021-699-1786. We have two callers holding Dr. Faiz. Let's go right into it. Assalamu alaikum. You're live on air. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, I just want to ask the doctor a question. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. I've been using all kinds of uh, tablets, capsules for the Insect bites, it's mosquito bites, doctor. And I sprayed the bed and I put some powders on the floor. But every night before I go to bed, then I start scratching and I don't have an eye closed because I scratch the whole night because the way the in- insect is biting me. Again, doctor, just tell me what tablet or capsule I can use, please. Okay. Shukran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Let's first take the next caller. You live on the Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam to both in the studio. Wa alaikum I just want to say, you know, my daughter passed away. Mm. She was so young of the lupus and the rheumatism, uh, you know, that arthritis. Now, why did they get that? We've been to so many specialists. What they say, they don't know why. It's not true. Because the lupus people, uh, you know, Auntie Amina Benjamin, the sugar money, may Allah grant it, Jenna. She always used to say, all the people of lupus that she was lived till 35. But lucky she lived till nearly 50. You know, but anyway, we're listening. Salaamu alaikum. Shukran wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum salam. The first lady, she la- <laughs> the cause of the problem are the mosquitoes. Did you say mosquitoes? <laughs> yeah, yes. insects. Also. Insects, yes. Using a tablet or some something topical will relieve the symptom, but you got to get rid of the cause. <laughs> so you got to figure out a way how to avoid those insects or eliminate them from your environment. Mm. That's really the solution. You know, putting on some topical antihistamine or uh, taking a tablet is not the solution. Mm. So you got to figure out a way, either put a net around your bed, you know, at night so the insects don't get to you, or something. Avoid the cause or eliminate the cause. The second caller, uh, yeah, it's a tragedy. You know, SLEs, you know, common people die young. But as I said, these things are reversible and even uh, uh, preventable. Preventable and even reversible mm. in, in many instances. So that is our f- should be our focus, is how, to, how do we prevent these chronic diseases, including autoimmune disease, which we're talking about today. Uh, and if you do have it, how do we reverse it? And as I said, you know, there's enough evidence to show that these things are reversible. Mm. Start with your diet. You know, you can change your whole life around if you have a chronic disease simply with your diet. You know, obviously it has to be a holistic approach, mm. but a diet is key. Dietary factors are key. Mm. Avoiding gluten, for example, gluten is a huge problem today. Gluten is a family of proteins, and when everybody, eat, when people eat gluten, especially some people who are genetically susceptible, your gut becomes leaky for several hours, at least three hours after you eat the gluten. Mm. So you, you're exposing your immune system to mm. toxins and undigested food molecule particles after eating gluten because it produces something that causes the release of zonulin, which opens up the gaps between the enterocytes, the cells that line the, the intestine. And so gluten is a huge, huge problem. And who, who doesn't eat gluten today? Because gluten is in everything. Even if you just take tablets, a lot of these capsules, mm. you know, actually contain gluten in, in the capsule itself. So... It's a massive problem, gluten. And if you are gluten sensitive, then you know you must do everything that you can to avoid gluten because you it can make you sick mm. in the short or long term. Yeah. A quarter to ten on Radio Seven Eight Six. This is Community Pulse. Autoimmune diseases is what we are talking about. We have a caller. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Doctor Faiz and Zainab. Zainab, be mashallah. And, um, I have to say again, uh, salamat for your position you're holding now. Uh, I want to ask the doctor there, Dr. Kirsten. Um, I'm actually on um, Pharmapris and Silvestatin. And then I think it's um, not that I think there's the other one with the water tablet, whatever it is. But um, uh, they took my blood sample and they sent it to the lab. It came back. 
Um, and then they took me some off from farmer press. I was normally usually taking a farmer press at night and one at, in the morning. And um, they took me off both the morning uh, farmer press and the evening farmer press. Um, I don't know what it means that they say that the kidneys is big or whatever. It's large. Uh, um, uh, they didn't explain that. All they said is the kidneys is large. So we have to take you off from the farm, uh, and I mean, I, I've got high blood uh, um, pressure, uh, uh, so uh, I don't know what, what is this going to be, because when I, when I first was diagnosed with it, when I started, uh, when I had a stroke and they started me with a the medication, then I did uh, inquiries and they said, well, all these tablets, uh, it causes side effects and um, you, you get damages on the other side, maybe on your kidneys and things like that. That I, I heard, but they say it is better to go on the on, on the medication uh, instead of getting another stroke. So that is what I want to know from the doctor now. I mean, they, they took me off from the morning and the evening form of pressure. I don't so, get any form of pressure. So what are you on at the moment, and brother? What they mean, I, I don't know what they mean by the cure. Kidneys is large. What what medication are you on at the moment? Now I'm I'm only on a uh, uh, um, the the the, the silvestatin. And your blood pressure is um, under control. In the morning, I, I don't know what is the other white tablet that I get in the morning. So you're not but sure I'm what? Only on two tablets now, one in the morning and one in the evening. Is the one for but blood the pressure? Are that made it two in the two in the morning and two in the evening. Is the one tablet for blood pressure also besides the simvastatin? That it was a form of pressure. Yeah, they stopped that, you said. Uh, uh, they stopped that the morning and so in the evening, not one only, maybe the morning only. They stopped from above. So you're not on so form of... I don't know how harmful that is or how dangerous is it. So you're not on form of pressure anymore? No, I'm, I'm not, uh, but I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm, I'm still uh, a diagnosed hypertension uh, patient. So are you on another hy- antihypertensive, another tablet for blood pressure? No, they didn't give any tablets uh, as in the substitute to it. But they have diagnosed you with hypertension, high blood pressure. Well, when I had a stroke, that was what they, they did, and I mean, uh, they, they, they told me that that is very, very dangerous because my blood pressure was very, very high at that, uh, at that time. It was something like about 180 over 110, somewhere there, around. and um, I had a stroke because of that. And now they told me, look here, you must take the tablets because otherwise you you in for another stroke. Or you, 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 you can suffer the consequences of the side effects of the tablets. So I don't know if that is the cause of the side effects that my kidneys is large now or enlarged, whatever it is. But that is just what they say. Okay, shukran they so much. You can explain to me anything. Okay, shukran so much. Um, shukran. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't really get that picture because if he has high blood pressure, then it possibly he means he's on another antihypertensive mm. because they stopped the pharma press, which is an which is an antihypertensive. Um, so I'm assuming he's on another antihypertensive. Um, as you know, I'm not a pro drug person, mm. pharmaceutical drug person. So I mean, for me, this patient and any patient on drugs, you know, are basically mismanaged. Okay. Because that's creating more problems for the patient. Okay, mm. so they're completely mismanaged. You know, we got to get away from this pharmaceutical paradigm. It's actually a major disaster. The simvastatin. I'm not even going to comment on that. Okay, <laughs> the brother can contact me if he wants me to give him, you know, enough uh, research evidence about simvastatin. I'm happy to do that. I'm not even going to comment mm. on that. So. Uh, <sighs> What can I say? It actually leaves me speechless, as you can hear. I, I'm lost for words. Mm. You know, this is happening. This happens like all the time. Mm. It, it happens all the time. It's happening all the time. It's an actual mega disaster. Mm. People really need to wake up. Really, I mean, very fast mm. now because I've seen people die because of this uh, Western medicine paradigm. It's mm. actually a disaster uh, of unbelievable proportions. But I, but I also think that what is even more sad mm. is that you go to the doctor. You you maybe sixty or so, almost seventy. They give you no explanation for why they 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 taking. They saying that you're no longer supposed to take certain medication or whatever, and then you leave not still not knowing what whether you what you're taking is getting like the gentleman just said. He is hypertensive, but he now doesn't. They never gave him a substitute. 
Yeah, he has no information. I yes, mean, he can't make informed decisions yes. because he has no information. And the doctor can't inform him because the doctor doesn't have time to even inform <laughs> himself. <laughs> he just listens to what the pharmaceutical reps tell him. Mm. You know, and so he spends five, ten minutes with his patient. Uh, what can you do for a patient in five, ten minutes besides <laughs> damaging them, you know? Moving on with some of the uh, questions that we uh, received via WhatsApp on 0786101112. Assalamu alaikum. How can one retain a healthy gut? And what type of diet does doctor recommend for people with psoriasis and psoriatic arthritis? That's one of the questions. Also, uh, water. Um, Is too much spring water good or not good for consumption? I heard so. Can a person drink eight glasses a day? Spring water. Uh, you, yeah, you should, there's a certain formula to use, you know, based on your height and your weight and so forth, how much water you should drink. But we should be hydrating ourselves, you know, with, with clean water every day, every day. Your whole body needs, every cell in your body needs water to function properly, including your brain. If your brain is dehydrated, you ain't going to be thinking properly. Okay, so very important that we drink water. It must be spring water, natural, clear, you know, Uncontaminated water is obviously the best. Tap water is a disaster. I think, you know, we should all avoid it or have a filter, proper filter. So water is important. Psoriasis, arthritis, diet, you know, you, it's, it's a whole story. It's a big, it's diet, is, it's a, it's all subject on its own. So I can't really advise the patient, you know, just in a few minutes what they should be eating. But you should be eating, you know, first of all, you should be eating uh, nutrient dense foods. Your, every cell needs nutrients, okay? We're eating energy-rich food, but there's no nutrients in the food today. So there's no building blocks in the food, mm. but there's a lot of energy. So if you're eating this fast food junk that you get at all these fast food outlets, it's, it's energy-rich foods. There's a lot of energy in it, but there's no building blocks. Your body can't, as cells can't use that food mm. because there's no nutrients in it. And so you're basically nutrient deficient from the kinds of foods that people are eating. And then you're damaging your microbiome. You're killing mm. off your bacteria. And you're, causing the promot- you're promoting the growth of bad bacteria, which has another vicious cycle, which then st- causes you know, appetite stimulation and you can't lose weight. It's a complete disaster. So it has to start from the beginning. You know, uh, Stop processed foods. Stop eating stuff that's not um, good for you specifically. There's a group of foods that we all shouldn't be eating, which is processed foods. That's the first thing. Then there's a group of foods which are good foods, okay? But some people can't even eat those good foods because they can't tolerate it. Mm. So your diet is really something that should be customized for yourself, okay? So you should basically, you become a detective, you know, mm. and you'll, you, you'll find out if you know what you're doing, which foods are good for you and which good. I, I mean, I've reached that point where I really know. My body even tells me when I eat something. I mean, I bought a piece of carrot cake the other day at one of these wellness shops I was a disaster because I mean I told my daughter <laughs> I should not have eaten that because mm. immediately I felt this was completely wrong there was something in there that was toxic to my body mm. you know so you'll reach a point you know when you're where really you're aware and conscious where you'll mm. know exactly what, what is right for your body yeah. we do have our final caller you live on the Assalamu Alaikum Wa Alaikum Salam and Salam to the doctor and thank you so for a beautiful program. Well, like All fine. I wanted to ask is, can you please tell me an alternative for the from um, some for statin? Okay. Okay, shukran so much. Walaikum salam wa rahmatullah. Um, just also a number of WhatsApp messages that came by 07861112. Um, we are, um, okay. So, so assalamu alaikum. I'd like to add some info to the last call. I'm suffering from anemia, which is iron inefficiency. inefficiency. Sister, you need to take vitamin B become iron tablets the green one and folic acid um, of each every day that will boost your, your iron and also eat lots of green veggies like broccoli cucumber etc and then sardines um, tin fish tuna it has lots of omega-3 in it um, and I hope that it will benefit you also try eating two black spotted bananas um, uh, two per day um, in answer to that Buddha can I go back to Kreya um, our forefathers and mothers uses these um, kreya back in the day and it's extremely very good and it's also organic and it has no side effects. And then um, I have cut down on my sugar intake and feel the positive difference. Or even now and then I have one or two homemade biscuits either with my tea. Sometimes just when my body craves for something sweet, I then drink a glass of water to break it down. Is it correct? <laughs> 
Yeah, that craving is not right. You, obviously, we shouldn't be craving sugar. And you must look at your yeast, you know, overgrowth in your in your gut because yeast can make you uh, actually candida can make you actually crave sugar. So, uh, but coming back to the lady who wanted to know about simvastatin, there are many natural alternatives, you know, to uh, to lower your cholesterol. I mean, there's so many. A patient can or the lady can contact me if she wants. Um, but the synthetic cholesterol lowering agents and the name she mentioned is. Uh, in my view, not a good idea. Um, diet, you know, the lady mentioned quite a few things, which is great. I think maybe, we, I don't think we have much, much more time, Zainab. Uh, but um, yeah. maybe we can just quickly run through a few steps to reverse autoimmune disease. And the first one is basically cut, cut out, you know, these inflammatory foods like sugar and flowers, you know, the white flour, the white rice and so forth. I know they had white rice at the gala dinner, but it was probably white rice masquerading or brown rice masquerading as white rice. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but white rice is actually not a good idea. Uh, white bread, anything white, you know, it's not a good idea. Eat good fats, cut out bad fats, you know, stop eating gluten. Gluten is a really, it's nasty, mm. as they say. <laughs> <laughs> um, eat the rainbow, you know, eat a lot of, all the colors of vegetables and fruit, you know, they contain really good stuff in there. Um, you know, look for hidden allergens, you know, uh, steer clear of uh, what non-organic soy, soy, non-organic soy is really bad for you. Ah, uh, There's so many, check for every metal toxicity, there's a whole list you must go through in order to reverse your autoimmune disease. Mm. Which, and it is possible, I mean, there's no, you know, people don't have to really be sick from an autoimmune disease anymore. If it hasn't reached the irreversible stage, then you can actually reverse it and you can prevent it, of course, yeah. Mm. There's still um, a few messages or questions via WhatsApp, WhatsApp, and unfortunately our time does not allow us, but inshallah, I think we can carry it over to the next um, uh, program, which is next Thursday, inshallah, so I'll keep those questions um, uh, for the next time. Many many people also still um, uh, asking for the contact details and how to get in touch with Dr. Faiz, so maybe just on a final note, your details, Dr. Faiz? It's just 078 216 273 and then Faiz, F-A-I-E-Z, at Brain science.co.za for easy brain science.co.za they are but <laughs> quick and <laughs> easy um you can get in contact with dr faze in 0784 what 0784162673 yeah. that's correct and so that concludes the first hour remember that you believe drives your behavior so ask yourself what is it that you believe in after the news inshallah mishka muhammad takes over and then i'll be back with you at 11 with pillar thursday stay tuned mm-hmm.